from the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hi everybody, and welcome to another edition of Talking Catholic. I'm Jen Morrow, and with me today is Mike Brass. Hello, Jen. That a good was that a good Walsh? That was a good Walsh. <laughs> I, I like. I tried to think how to introduce and really throw off the listeners. So I thought the best thing to do was do his his hello that I've tried to perfect over the last uh, number of weeks that I've listened to the podcast. It was pretty good, like that moment of dejection, like oh, I've got to be on this podcast with you yeah, again. Here we go. Let's buckle up, and we've yeah. got an hour to ta- to chat. Right. <laughs> good job. He'll be proud. So what's going on? What's been new? Uh, Well, I just got back from a wonderful conference out in uh, the suburbs of Boston, Massachusetts, uh, specifically uh, Quincy, as they probably say up there. Um, It was the um, Partners in Mission Conference uh, for Advancement and Enrollment for Catholic Schools. So wonderful four days of all things uh, marketing, enrollment, fundraising. Uh, with other Catholic schools, other dioceses. Uh, it's just, it was, as they would say up there, a wicked good time. So um, <laughs> I, I had a uh, great time learning, great time uh, meeting other folks. And uh, I, the way the timing worked out with the uh, 4th of July holiday, I was out of the office for roughly 10 days. So I really thought someone was going to be subletting my office or they were just going to replace me because uh, I didn't think I was coming back. So I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't do either of those things. As someone who works down the hall from you, um, it was very quiet yep. and we got a lot of work done. I, that's, so, I, I, I would only ask if that's what happened while I'm gone. Yeah, yeah definitely. So uh, let us know when your next uh, conference is so we can plan our Catholic Star Herald editions around that. I, I can imagine you'll get a lot of work done at the end of July, beginning of August, because that'll be <laughs> next, next time. I'm cool. Are you going out again for vacation or? For- uh, just yeah, va- yeah, that'll be vacation. But uh, so uh, just before the school year hits, because once once August hits for us in the Office of Catholic Education, uh, it doesn't stop in the summertime. That's another podcast. Our our fellow co-host and um, M- uh, Mary Nell and I will be doing uh, soon talking about what happens at the schools in the summertime it doesn't stop for us but it definitely picks back up a little bit in august so trying to get in there before uh get that vacation in before that how about you jen what have you been up to um i've been on vacation a little bit i went to north dakota which i've never been to which was fantastic um and then michigan and then other than that you know just uh planning ahead for the summer for the catholic star herald we have a summer intern uh this this summer, so the Catholic Star Herald will see some readers. will see a new a new byline and maybe a new face out and about. So I'm excited about that. And his name is uh, Zachary Kiefer. He's an English major, so that should be a lot of fun. And uh, that's about it right now. Good Fourth of July. Look, going back to Boston, I have two important questions about your conference. Okay, I have to go back. First off, whatever you learned in your conference, are you going to write for us and do a column? Put me on the spot. Absolutely. Yes. Done. Thank yeah. you. Thank that, you. The easiest way to get a yes is put it on yep. tape or, yep. or, or digital. On tape. Yeah, on tape. Yeah. Think now you're talking about I guess in the cloud or wherever yep. this goes when we're done. Uh, so talking about the tape actually leads me to my second question. Did you visit a Wahlburgers while you were in Boston? I you know what? I didn't and I was looking for it. So one of the <laughs> one of the you? nights I was, yes. Uh, okay. Weirdly enough, uh, one of the nights we were dropped into, uh, like, dropped off into downtown Boston for dinner, and uh, they have a a bar uh, restaurant called the Black Rose that that they all congregate after dinner uh, for like sort of the final night celebration. Uh, and I went with a few other folks from the conference to dinner, um, but as as we were leaving the restaurant to go to the Black Rose, we got arguably very lost and uh, asked several people how to get to the Black Rose. And in the meantime, I looked for a Wahlburgers because I was a little hungry and felt if I'm going to do anything touristy, it should it should be to honor the Wahlberg family. Of course, it wouldn't be Cheers, you know, one of the longest yeah. running shows in, in on TV. It would be Wahlburgers. Yeah, and and trying to find somewhere to knock on a window and ask if anyone likes apples, but you know that was just <laughs> for my 
for my love of Goodwill Hunting, but again, couldn't find anyone to uh, be, be game with that. And uh, but did not see. I mean, I'm sure there was one. I did not see it in my uh, in my travels, but uh, which it's just an excuse to go back. You can't do everything. You have to leave something undone to give you a reason to go back. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, Mike, you already said, you know, that uh, about how Catholic schools keeps busy in the summer. Um, you know, even though we both taken a few trips, the diocese does not take a break of the summer where we're just as busy. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today with our pastoral department and, and, and talk about what uh, what they've been up to what's coming up for later in the summer and what's coming up later in the fall. So all of our listeners, parishioners, everyone in the diocese can you know, put it on their calendar, some more things to look forward to. So uh, you want to tell us who we got on the show with us today? Yes, uh, we, we have a jam-packed house today. We are doing it on Zoom. Otherwise, I think it would be the most crammed that uh, the room we typically record in would, would have been with uh, with this crew. So I will uh, do my best with uh, names and titles, and uh, I'll start with uh, a familiar voice on the podcast and on, on our uh, cha- our social media channels, uh, Donna Ottaviano Britt, who is the uh, Secretary for pa- Pastoral Outreach and the Director of Discipleship and Leadership. Uh, we also have Andres Arango. Right, slow down. I want to stand out with Donna. Hi, okay, oh, we're gonna we're gonna say hello to everybody. Okay, that works. Hi, Donna. We're gonna say a little hello. I just want to be as chipper as possible, so when Mike Walsh listens to this, he's like, "Oh, it's her." <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you did break. You you lost. You you missed out the point that uh, we have an award winning Donna. That's that yeah. is true. I apologize. <laughs> well, thanks. Okay, continue. <laughs> yes. Uh, next, we have uh, Andres Arango, who is uh, uh, the head of our Hispanic ministry and director of evangelization, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Andres? Yeah, it's the red mic, Mike. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, welcome uh, welcome on. How is everything going for you? Everything going fine, yeah. Enjoying the summer, yeah. Busy as always, but good. Hola a todos. <laughs> and we learned some Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next to you, uh, in on the, on the Zoom camera for our listeners uh, and works in your office with you is Ruby. Uh, I'm going to try your last name, Ruby, and I apologize, but I'm going to say Lucas Siewitz because that's how I read it. How close was that? Well, very close. That is very close. That That is my uh, my Eastern European background uh, trying to come out because those, those are similar letters and uh, put together that, that I'm used to. So uh, give that a shot. Um, next we have- Wait, wait, what's Ruby's yeah, title? Yeah, Ruby. yeah, Ruby, what is your official title for me? I'm um, family and Jews. Oh, was that? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Good to have you both on. And yeah. uh, like, you know, there's only one person that's allowed to butcher names. That's usually me. So I'm really glad that somebody else is doing it today. I, 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 I had a feeling that's why I got an email earlier this yep. morning asking how honored you I would be to uh, say all of the names. Yeah. The so. Sure. I, I, I listen. I I caught this strategy and and I jumped in the flame, two feet. So you did. We're good. Uh, we also have uh, one of the newer members, uh, Michael Sims, who is the uh, director for the um, Office of Life and Justice Ministries. Welcome, a uh, fellow Mike, to the uh, to the podcast. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you very much. And since we're gonna be talking some calendar things, I have a silly dad joke. I'm afraid for the calendar. Its days are numbered. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to take that one home and crack my children up with that <laughs> one. It's going to be great. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah, I'm going to write that one down as soon as we're, as soon as we're done. Um, and uh, I think to to finish the Guinness Book of World Records for the number of mics on a podcast, um, we also have uh, Michael Bedix here, who is the director of uh, the Office of Worship and Christian Initiation. Mike, how are we doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm, uh, it's good to to chat with you online. We we see each other from time to time, but it's good to have a forum where we can talk about your work. So I'm excited to hear about every, what everybody's going on. But um, it's good to good to talk to you here. Um, we also have an, our an, the next non Mike on the list, but a, but a, a fellow um, friend of the the podcast here and of our social media channels uh jose rodriguez who is the director of family and youth ministries jose how we doing 
Doing all right. I was uh, a lot better before Mike's uh, joke, but I, it, well, okay, we're hanging on. He also went to Boston. Apparently, it was a better trip, though. I don't. I don't know. What <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to each other? A level of confidentiality, Mike Sims. <laughs> no, I was also in Boston for the Fourth of July weekend, um, but it was not work related, so uh, it had to be better because I was not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and probably yeah, much more uh, much more celebration to be had. I'm I'm sure. From what I can recall, yes. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Jose, did you go to a Wahlburgers? No, we did not. Oh, not we spent any time on uh, the South End and a couple of days up on the North End, and uh, there's stuff that happened in between. It was a great <laughs> good. time. Good, good, good. That's so great. I I. I when, when talking about have, uh, future vacations, you know, my family does want to go up to Boston, and one of my children suggested St. Patrick's Day, and I said, "Oh no, you do not want to go up there for St. Patrick's Day. Not at least to expose any any kind of children to what's happening <laughs> in St. Patrick's Day." So I think he caught caught what I was trying to say. But uh, good to have you back here in uh, in Jersey, and and look forward to hear what you have. And then finally. Uh, the glue that holds this department together, I would say, uh, is Anne-Marie Howards, who is the uh, administrative assistant uh, cat wrangler for uh, the pastoral outreach department. Anne-Marie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And and we should know, because again, this is a audio medium, but uh, Anne-Marie is probably the most professional looking of all of us on the podcast. She has her headset with her microphone uh, ready to go. So uh, we'll all take orders up. Oh, Mike, Mike Sims just caught on to what I was putting down and he just put his on. So Wait, I'm sure that's a pride. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Donna, your, yours is the coolest look, though, because you just have the headphones. I will say that. But I mean, Anne-Marie is either ready for a podcast or ready to all take our Starbucks order. So we're trying to figure out which one that is. Uh, but I thought you were like we're happy to have Anne-Marie as well. Let's <laughs> take this on. Yep. And I'm just wearing a tie on a Friday. So I also feel very. Um, I don't know when the dress code change. Let me know. And I know what I'm doing longer. I know what I just started longer on Friday. I know what you mean. We all have ties on, Jen. Everybody <laughs> has ties on. For Donna, it was uh, Roy Rogers, though, right, as we learned. Right? Roy Rogers taking orders. No one is going to get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> no one. So, so can I explain the reference? So, yeah. So, Please. Uh, it, I recently had a birthday, and the Ooh. lovely members of the pastoral department took me to lunch yesterday uh, to celebrate my birthday. And so we had this conversation. We ran around the table to talk about what jobs did we have in high school. Mm. And so mine was working in a Roy Rogers in a wicker cowboy hat, uh, and I often worked the drive through and I would, had to say, welcome, to howdy, welcome to Roy Rogers. Can I take your order, please? <laughs> So I just want to put that whole comment. Sims just made a context. <laughs> I'm really glad you did because that painted a picture and I am going to guarantee that will be a meme. That will be a meme. Oh, <laughs> Someone find Kalitz right now. Oh, yeah. Guys, please, can we not find Kalitz right now? <laughs> He's right across the hall. It's I know. 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, well, happy birthday, Donna. Happy yes, birthday. happy birthday. All right, thank you. So, uh, Donna, since we're you're you're talking and you uh you have the birthday, what's been going on uh, with the uh, the pastoral department when it comes to to your area in 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 the last uh, couple weeks? Start off the summer. So I really think um, it was gearing up for the second year of the Eucharistic revival. So for the pastoral offices to really help the parish teams to be ready, because uh, we were sort of transitioning the reins you know, of this huge initiative that the church in the United States is it's taking on. And so helping them to be prepared. Uh, so we met with them several times, the teams via Zoom in May. They did a spectacular job across the diocese with their Corpus Christi processions, which I know, Jen, from a Captain Stark Herald standpoint and the social media channels, we covered a fair bit of what kind of happened from Camden to the shore. You know, so it was really a lot of beautiful work. So they they have built plans, so it's really trying to help them with the work that is in front of them now. The work that's in front of them is really um, to deepen 
the belief and the relationship that the people in their parish families have with Jesus, uh, really they're making disciples, you know, which is formed to my heart in the disciple and leadership office. So I really think that was the part of it. And, and really for us, we've been talking about how do we continue to support them? This is not, this is not a program. Um, this is really a movement. This is really a moment. Uh, and all of us should really be thinking about it. Not unlike what Jesus told the apostles on Ascension Thursday mm-hmm. is to go and make disciples of all nations. So go and make disciples of all your people in your parish. And so I really think it's our work around supporting them in those efforts. So reviewing our plans, they all submitted their Eucharistic revival plans. So taking a look at those and thinking how we may support them and thinking about what that looks like. So that was really kind of how we kicked off the, you know, late spring and into early summer. But there will be more to come. You know, I, I've been talking to um, some people in different dioceses. I'm not going to use the Walsh uh, term, lesser diocese. I'm going to say other diocese. And it's really, I'm really blessed to be in the Diocese of Camden because we have concrete plans for this Eucharistic revival. We did the first year. The second year, the parishes are taking it up where um, some others are still struggling. It's more nebulous. And so, I, you know, I'm picking up parish bulletins all the time and reading on Facebook to get story ideas. And they they have plans. Like they're, everything that you've been doing in your entire department, they've picked it up and it looks like they've run with it. So I'm really excited to see what the parishes are going to come up with in the next couple of months. Yeah, I really think uh, the leaders who have sort of kind of owned this whole moment in time and in their own personal spiritual lives as, as being tapped by their pastors to kind of lead this initiative, you feel you really just have to love what they're doing, you know, and really kind of give a nod to the um their embracing of what it means to make disciples and create moments of encounter. Because encounter is different for everyone. You can't just do, you know, certain kinds of encounters. You really have to be diverse because everybody needs Jesus in a different place. So they're really doing beautiful work. And I, I think it's it's a weirdly to say this, but a, but a perfect time to get back to the community side of things with the COVID restrictions and things being lifted and and people wanting to get out more and embrace community. And we we've seen that throughout the school year this year for schools, and I think it's it's translating back to the parish level as well with these types of interactions and and connections, you know. So I think it it fits, you know, well time wise. Um, I think so too. I would agree with that. The other thing I would share is we had two events um, in June uh, that we all collaborated on. It's really bringing leaders together uh, who have led the three great initiatives in this diocese over the last five years, which was the Convocation of Catholic Leaders, the Synod, uh, and now the Eucharistic Revival. And there was some crossover in those leaders, but I mean, really the building the kingdom. And if you look at kind of what the Eucharistic Revival has in it is it's for invitations. You can find all of it in the Synod. It's all linked back to missionary discipleship. So we just want more people to know who Jesus is and to have a relationship with him. And so that is our collective effort. Uh, along the similar lines, uh, Andres and Ruby, you, you've been busy. You had a, a big uh, event last month with Encuentro. Uh, what, what's been going on with Hispanic ministry and maybe fill the, the listeners on a little bit about uh, the Encuentro. Yeah, no, thank you, Jane. Yeah, we have been busy also in June. We, we have like two major events for, for, for the office. One was the regional Encuentro and the other was uh, the IMEC uh, annual retreat. Well, I can speak a little bit about the Encuentro and Ruby could mention something about the, the IMEC retreat. Uh, you know, it has been a process, as Donna mentioned, you know, in the Catholic Church and in evangelization, we don't want too much program. We want really, you know, process. Uh, you know, the, the fifth encuentro was a process who began in 2016 uh, to listen to the needs of the Latino community in the United States, but also to empower missionary disciples to share Jesus with others. And all that process, you know, um, by the way, I'm sure in the future we are going to be talking more about that because one of the fruits of the Encuentro is the new national plan, pastoral plan for Hispanic ministry that was approved by the USCCB, the Conference of Visual, was over well approved, uh, you know, in, in June. Um, and, you know, that is going to be like 
uh, a document that is going to help us really uh, to give the place to the Latino community here in the Catholic U.S. Church and really to empower the more Latino leaders to serve the church. It was very interesting because the, the day after the national plan was approved, we have the regional encounter. You know, regional encuentro is not connected with the fifth encuentro because we use the word encuentro as congress, conference. It's very common to use in the Latino community that word encuentro. Because we were in the Diocese of Metochen. Very interesting. We, we were the second largest delegation because we were over the Diocese of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, the first one was Newark, and we were the, the second largest delegation, like 32 delegates from the different parishes, ecclesial movements. You know, Ruby was there, Jose was there. Uh, and I think it was a, a beautiful day that we can have this kind of community with other brothers and sisters from other dioceses. And the main two topics were the Eucharistic revival, of course, because in what we are uh, uh, right now in all that process, but also the Synod. And um, by the way, I think you are already knows the news that today was the least of the of the people who has been invited to the Synod. That's very interesting. All, all, all comments in the news. Uh, but we were talking also about the Synod. Uh, and I think it was a beautiful day. Uh, Cardinal Tobin was there, he presided the Eucharist, and I think it was a, a, a nice moment for the Latino community. Do you see, um, you, know, you talked about the, the National Plan for Hispanic Ministry being released. Do you see that that will be something uh, that you and Ruby will be and will be working on and bringing to the, the Diocese of Camden? Like, will that be brought to a local level? Yeah, completely. Right, you know, right now the plan is it, a national team who was working. You know, I have the blessing to work in that national team. We were working in the draft, in the document, different draft until the bishop approved. Now they are going to do like a pilot of how to implement the program in a couple of dioceses around the country. And I think after that pilot, they are going to provide us some guidelines for the diocese of how to apply in a local level. As you know, of course, we will be a, a attentive to all of that. However, I need to mention something. It's, it's like the C note. We have been talking here in the pastoral offices that we don't need to wait until the C note in 2025. They are going to probably publicize a document. We don't need to wait for that. We need right now, you know, listening to the needs of the parishes, how to serve them. Because I, I think in some sense, we are already doing some of the things that the national plan is promoting, but but of course we are going to do it in a major scale and we're going to receive some uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, but the other is probably can mention something about the IMEC retreat, you know, that we have also in June. We had our annual IMEC retreat on June 10. We had around 100 students to attend to the retreat. Uh, and we had our team was um, Equalist in the Bible. It will teach us about the Eucharistic. We had adoration time. It was a nice time for the honest students can gather together and share, you know, different, um, you know, experience in the east side. We have Atlantic City, Camden, Blackwood, um, Bayland, and Bristol. They are at different levels. And, and um, we had a good time. And we had and like the two teachers in the Eucharistic and the people, you know, all the students were very happy about learning the Eucharistic, uh, was, well, they are a priest, Carlos Lopez, the teaching. And, uh, we had very good response by every year. They looking all the students for to, you know, can gather together and do experiences. So that was really good. I liked looking at the pictures, uh, from the IMEC because it looked like there were, um, uh, a lot of different age groups. I saw a lot of uh, young adults there as well, some of whom I believe spoke at the Eucharistic Congress. So that was that was good to see all different age groups represented at this catechetical event. Yeah, and and uh, I, I had to grab the the picture that I took, but it's it's interesting, you know, talking about this, and it connects to um, one of our other guests as well. But uh, at the conference that I was at, they spoke about the Latino growth. Um, especially in, in the Catholic church and in Catholic schools, obviously that was the, the pretext of it. But one of the things that stood out to me was uh, Latinas represent 
35% of all practicing Catholic parishioners in America. So I don't know how that's reflected in, in New Jersey or our diocese specifically, but as you mentioned, Andres, I mean, it's, it's growing and it, it doesn't need certain dates to, to, you know, hit, hit marks for, right. I mean, we should be doing it now. We're at a, at a great point numbers wise to, you know, engage, engage our, you know, Hispanic community, which, you know, through, through both things, which is, was great to hear. Um, and you mentioned students. So I think that makes it easy transition for our host to ask Jose what's going on in the, in the youth and family, uh, world this summer. What do you got? What do you got planned? Um, youth and family this summer. And it's, it's, you know, it was like you were talking about earlier, you know, things really start to pick up. Our young people are out of school and they're with their families. So, uh, we're really focusing on, on engaging whole family units and, and evangelizing the families. Um, I, I, I posted something to Facebook the other day. Um, cause as we know, it's, it's kind of for us, right in the church is July one is like our new calendar almost, right? We can start to begin the new pastoral planning. Um, so I kind of just challenged our parishes, like what would it look like as we're preparing our pastoral calendars to f- focus on radically evangelizing young people through their families. Um, and I think with the rest of the pastoral team here on the floor, it's kind of been our motive too. It's what can we all do in our capacities to evangelize young people through their families and really reach out to them. Um, things that are coming up right away is our, I guess our biggest thing is our summer in the city, right? Um, we're looking at the week of August 13th through the 19th at the Blessed Carlo Acuti Center. Um, that's kind of a highlight for the year for many of our young people in the diocese. Um, and I say that confidently because it it's, it shows there's proof that our young people come in during their high school years as participants, then want to return as kind of like junior advisors, if you will. Then they go off to college and they get their degrees and they, they, they start their careers and then they come back as full like chaperones. They, they really cut out that that week to be with our young people and do service. Um, for those who may not be familiar with Summer in the City, it's just a week-long service retreat uh, in Atlantic County. So we hit different uh, nursing homes, some soup kitchens. We work with the Franciscan sisters, uh, the CFR sisters down there. Um and it's just a really great immersive retreat for our young people um, to kind of just step out of their comfort zone and offer of themselves. Um, it is very much a retreat. It is not a vacation. There's long days. Um, and actually, this you're looking forward to this year because uh, our newest member of the floor will be joining me for the week. Dr. Michael Sims will be on just to kind of push that, that um, social justice aspect of it a little harder, really get our our young people to understand, which is, which is great. Um, and then kind of moving into September, the, uh, our wedding anniversary mass, right? So for a couple celebrating 25, 50, 60, or 70 or more years, um, you know, we, we have this anniversary mass that we put on, um, this year to be at St. Elizabeth Ann Steeton's on, on Sunday, September 24th. Um, Registrations have already been sent out to the parishes, so you, you you register right at your parish, and then those forms will come to me. But um, a couple of different things that you know, just we have some some calend- uh, some dates on the calendar, like grandparents, World Grandparents Day is coming up, July twenty third. Just things that we'll send out from the office so that parishes can engage the families. Um, you know, it doesn't cost nothing to have all the grandparents in the parish stand up on a Sunday afternoon and receive a blessing. You know, just to acknowledge that. Um, so we're really we're really working through Mike Sims and I have been working through a pastoral calendar this year. We we'll see how what we can team up on, and again with with the other colleagues as well. So we really, I think I think I can say this with confidence that our focus really is um, bringing life to our families and then prioritizing things and helping them um, prioritize things correctly in regards to uh, you know church starts at home. It's, it's domestic church is super important. The evangelization of our young people happens at home. They can't just be at the parish or through religious ed or through youth ministries. So, you know, it's an exciting time. We're, we're, we're doing a bunch of stuff. We got, I just kind of wanted to drop this. Uh, I'm not going to say too much, but at the end of this month, uh, a little kind of a announcement or save the date, if you will, we'll be going out about a huge project we are coming up for the uh, Christmas season. 
Um, so we just have to wait on that. I don't want to give too much because I don't want people to start, you know, but I would, you know, keep an open mind. Let's keep our calendars open because it's, I think it's going to be a huge fun event for all our families. So, so you're going to uh, drop a little Christmas in July news. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. You know, so don't open until, you know, Christmas, July, but yeah. uh, it's coming, it's coming down the, down the pipeline there. Just give it a couple of weeks, but I wanted to throw it out there so that everyone's ears are kind of, you know, popped open and ready for the announcement. It's, it's going to be fun. It's good stuff coming. Cool. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jen. I have a question, but go ahead. Oh, my question was, maybe it's the same question. For people who want to uh, sign up for Summer in the City, uh, how can they How can they do that, Jose? So Summer in the City there is on our website. Um, the registration form is there. If not, they can reach out to me directly via email or my phone number, which is all over the place. Uh, if not, it's... Uh, 856-583-2908. Um, just give me a call or shoot me an email. Uh, Jose.Rodriguez at Um, You know, it, it's space is limited um, just because of the, the retreat house itself. But I mean, hey, we make it work. You know what I mean? Like I said, it, it's one of those things where it, not only is it life-giving for our young people, but me, my, uh, myself, um, you know, I, I get a lot out of it that week. So it's, 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 it's a great week. It's fun. It's good to be there. So, um, that was one of my questions to say I'm like a professional host. That was one of my questions. <laughs> my, my second one, uh, was, and maybe, you know, it might be someone else or a different department or, but I, you know, for people who visually see the, you know, the vacation Bible school model, you know, or you know those those sort of summer camps. What what do we do that's similar to that? Because typically, I mean, is that on the parish level? Is that you know I, I see it at very different, all kinds of different Christian you know churches. But from our stance, you know, for the family part, or for even younger youth, you know, this the, you know I I look at it from the student you know perspective. What 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 do you try to do, or what does what should we try to do to engage those students in that similar you know model? So some of our parishes have like something called like a summer intensive for religious ed, um, but that is just that, right? It's 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 catechesis um, during the summertime. Um, you know, our our in conversations with our youth ministers at the parishes that have youth ministry, it is in, we encourage I encourage them strongly to take the summer and really immerse themselves in some more scripture, offer more prayer opportunity. Um, get our young people in front of the blessed sacrament. Um, but really, you know, it's, it's, again, this is that thing that starts at home. It's, it's huge for mom and dad to sit around with their young person or their children and open scripture together, pray the rosary together, have these conversations. Because when they're coming to youth ministry, you know, the religious ed and youth ministry are two different things. So our young people go to religious ed to receive that. When they come to ministry, it's an opportunity for prayer, fellowship, reflection, and journeying with the young person. Um, so during the summer months, our, our youth ministers take advantage of having them. Uh, yeah, there's vacations and there's things like that. But our young people are present. They look for that. And it do dovetailing off of what you mentioned earlier about COVID and, and bringing people back together, for a while there, the, the thing that I kept hearing from young people was that COVID taught them how to be alone, how it was okay for them to just, you know, Jose, I really don't need to go to youth group um, anymore because I'm okay. And it's just, we're really trying to rebuild that community sense of, okay, that's how you may feel, but church needs you. So we need you and coming together and, and having those types of conversations. So really uh, at a parish level, our, our youth ministers, and not only our youth ministers, I mean, I, I say it all the time, the staff, our, our priests, Everybody in the pew should really be pouring themselves into our young people that they're they're there, you know, acknowledging their graduations, acknowledging uh, that they're heading off to college in, in the fall or whatever it is that they're doing. Get to know the young people in your parish so that they know they have a place so that they belong. And, you know, we continue to grow that way. I'll make sure that our high schools hear that message. I think that's a that's a great message to to call, out, especially to our high school students. So. Thank you for that clarification too, because I think that's probably some, you know, it, being a little naive on my part to seeing that and, and asking. And I know we have, you know, like you said, we have sort of those intensives or 
prep for you know CCD, which falls and actually in my department with with uh, Dr. Lee Delamonica. But you know, it's it's that perception, right? It's out there that. Yeah. They they've got the the banners and the, you know and the yeah. finding things for kids to do. But I think the other point that you made, which which is valid, and and I see it too. And I you know it, acknowledging that group of the the youth ministers and the young people in the church and letting young kids see that right, and they can aspire to to continue their faith with with people that they can look up to that are closer to their age, right? And that's that's an important thing for for the summertime for kids when they're out and about to see kids doing work like summer in the city and things, you know, that you can do. It's also an excuse to get my kids off the couch. And that's why I also asked that question because they are deep into summer vacation. <laughs> you know what I like is, um, yeah, I've mentioned on the podcast before that uh, my parish is in the Diocese of Trenton. So it's Long Beach Island, St. Francis of Assisi. And that's a, it's a, it's a parish much like many parishes in the Diocese of Camden. That's a, a lot. A lot of people come back for the summer, right? So you're seeing people that you haven't seen since last year, and who I see a lot that are. I see a lot of young people involved in our as Eucharistic ministers, um, uh, lectors, and musicians. So we have a lot of new, uh, mainly in the like the I would say the twenties that are back in the young adult choir. And so I say that to say, Mike Bedix, what's going on with music? Do you like that. Those music. Well, not too much. Well, there's a lot going on. Everything, not just music, but uh, yeah. um, well, I, you know, I'm going to talk about the travels too, since y'all were talking about your vacations and where. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, but uh, no, next week I'll be attending the National Pastoral Musicians uh, Conference, which is in Reno, Nevada, this year. Um, so I'll be there from uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, annual gathering of pastoral musicians from around the nation, Catholic pastoral musicians. Um, usually, you know, great opportunity to connect with people I've known from other areas of the country. When I used to live and work in North Carolina, reconnecting with some folks I knew from there and whatnot. Uh, good formation, staying current with, you know, what what's going on, revision of the liturgical documents, et cetera, um, or the liturgical books, I should say, not the uh, documents, which sort of leads into... The, the you know the re revision of RCIA to OCIA is coming the order of Christian initiation of adults so just ongoing plans to you know keep more formation in front of people for uh, the new language we'll be using there with uh, RCIA switching to OCIA um, but also uh, the the back half of of, Ju of June I took some time off because June fourteenth was Molly and I's twentieth anniversary um, so we took a little, little time off to have a little vacation there. Um, Happy the anniversary. anniversary. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Yes. So 20 years for us. We just celebrated. Um, so we did a little bit of travel in there. And uh, like I said, next week I'll be in Reno. And then we'll kind of get back and get cracking on all the fall stuff. But, um, you know, just a lot of ongoing uh, events for me that, it, it, you know, we've since we've come off of the pandemic, really, you know, I started in 2019, we're almost immediately thrown right into the, the pandemic. Um, and since we've come back almost monthly, we've had, uh, training sessions for extraordinary ministers and or lectors, um, English and Spanish. So just to see those trainings happen and to be all over the diocese in different parishes and meet folks and be able to, to get to know folks a little more personally has been really a blessing. Um, hundreds and hundreds of new extraordinary ministers have been trained you know, for the diocese for different parishes, you know, over the past at least two years. And so those are going to continue. So that's a lot of work, you know, monthly just to keep those going. There's a, a trainings we just did in Wildwood and in uh, Woodbury Heights, Infant Jesus Parish. Uh, so in August, uh, training will be in uh, Absecon, Um And then two parishes already asked to host in the fall of uh, Summers Point and or uh, Linwood. So you know, it's just, just to keep these trainings available. People are asking, you know, people are interested in serving in this ministry. I think it's important just to bring that up within the context of the Eucharistic revival as well, too. You know, people are really looking forward to assisting their pastors and their parishes in this ministry of serving the Eucharist. So um, early June, we did a retreat for extraordinary ministers to sort of retrain, if you will, existing ministers, which was in uh, North Cape May at uh, uh, St. John Newman Parish. Father Jamie King and I did that together, and uh, that was really well attended. We had about you know 80, 80 90 people from uh, the nearby parishes. Some folks even came down from you know up this way and and uh, Williamstown, even uh, 
you know, so folks from all around the diocese and we came to that. So we're going to look to continue to do those retreats for extraordinary ministers, uh, at least quarterly over the, you know, the next year within the Eucharistic revival, um, you know, to, to sort of renew folks three year certification rather than kind of, you know, sit through basic training again to renew your certification. That doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, so that, that went over well, and we're looking to continue at those. Um, we'll do a retreat for lectors, uh, the third Sunday in ordinary time, which I was really looking forward to the winter. Um, cause this will be, you know, mid January or so, but we'll do a similar experience to retrain lectors on the Sunday of the word of God, which is the, uh, the third Sunday of ordinary time. So we'll do some sort of lector retreat for, uh, for existing lectors in, in January. Um, there'll be a, a large formation session. Uh, early February then for this uh, new translation of the OCIA, similar to what we did over the past couple of years for when the baptism ritual was revised and when the penance, the, the order of penance was revised. We just did all these sessions for the new translations of the liturgical books. Um, this coming fall, I hope to bring in some folks to do a retreat for liturgical ministers, not just, you know, specifically extraordinary ministers, but lectors, musicians as well. Hopefully we'll, we'll get anyone who serves in liturgy together in the fall. Those plans are coming together. So I don't, I don't have all the details right now too. So I, I, you know, I can't go too far with saying when and where, um, but that that's in the works, not quite finalized yet. Um, you know, what will keep me busy in the fall too is, you know, not necessarily my events, but as Andres was mentioning about, you know, the diocesan Hispanic celebration uh, will be, so I'll be involved in putting together the music for that. I'll put together the music for the Blue Mass, uh, the music and the liturgy and the environment for the priest convocation in October. I'll, I'll put that together as well. Um, the musicians of the diocese have just started um, to ask for a monthly gathering, just a, a meet and greet, whether it's it's formal or informal. Um, we're going to get together uh, with the musicians of the diocese as well. So um, anybody listening to this, if your parish musicians don't get my emails or my email updates, have them write to me. Um, so that way I can get in touch and make sure I get those dates and locations to folks. Um, you know, we're just covering different topics as folks ask, you know, we'll talk about how do you maintain and recruit and keep a strong, healthy choir going. Um, another session we'll talk about the, you know, the whole copyright issue and staying compliant with your live streams and your printing and what you can and can't do, you know, as far as, um, you know, not broadcasting, so to say, but, you know, podcasting, you know, what, what you can and can't put out there on the internet um, legally, what you need a license for, et cetera. That is so important. Uh, things that like so that. Important. Yeah, that's what folks are asking for. Um, Jose mentioned the wedding anniversary mass. So, you know, I'll, I'll help him put together music and liturgy for the wedding anniversary mass. Um, we've been actively looking forward to the next Pastoral Associates Day retreat, which will also be in the winter, though, but those plans are ongoing. Um, I'll be helping out with two of the deacon formation sessions um, to talk music and liturgy with the men who are currently in the diaconate, uh, the, the permanent diaconate formation. Uh, I forget those dates off the top of my head, but I think it's two Saturdays in the fall um, that I'll be getting together uh, with those men. Well, it sounds like yeah. Yeah. Kathy Star yeah. Harold will be reaching out to you for a list of all the things you have coming up because you got you got a lot coming up. Yeah, there's a lot going. You know, it's a lot of ongoing sort of things that might kind of fly under the radar, but it's you know it's it, it's all there. You know, there's a lot going on. I I have to ask Mike for this conference. How often do you just break into song? I feel like this is the opportunity for like a musical. You know, this this conference. So oh, quite often, yeah, quite often, there's, yeah. That's what it feels like. Where, yeah, I mean, you know, with the conference of musicians, most of the breaking into song is well planned out ahead of time. <laughs> um, by, by the time we're done with our our conference day, usually enough singing has happened that we, we need a little break. Um, but it, it, if there is a piano in the hotel lobby, there 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 will be action. All yeah, the, the hotel uh, the hotel has to understand what's oh, going on yeah. yes, from this conference. <laughs> the <laughs> happiest hotel that entire week. <laughs> Well, yeah, Mr. Sims, what yeah. uh, you know, in addition to what's coming up, uh, we just had the you know the the one year anniversary of the Supreme Court uh, Dobbs ruling, and I know that some of our life and justice um, advocates went down to Trenton for that 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 rally and and, and mass. Um, so I'm sure you've been a busy busy since your uh, 
in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, for sure. Um, many of the folks that attended the, uh, that rally in Trenton have, in the absence of or the time that this position had not been fill, filled, had formed a, what's called what's called and noted in this Star Herald, the United for Life Coalition. Um, and that is a very active group. Um, I actually meet on the 31st of July to look at the calendar in respect of to the calendar, like, you know, October is Respect Life Month. So there's a number of things that are in planning in terms of speakers, possibly having uh, some big speakers come that are nationally to our parishes and deaneries. Can't say, again, much about that because a lot of things are in planning as summer has been noted to be a time to do that. You know, in, in terms of the life issues from abortion to euthanasia, at all points in between, I, I think in this office, if you take the A of the word affordable as an affordable housing to the X in xenophobia, which is a hatred of foreigners and, stra and strangers, this office covers a lot of that, as we all do in our, in our, in our faith lives as, as Catholics. So there's been a number of things I've been working with, and I keep, think the key word that Jose brought up uh, as in terms of the pastoral counts, uh, calendar is partnership. So developing these partnerships with organizations and people in schools. So that's what I've been working on. Hope that in September to meet our high school campus ministers to look at the calendar. Uh, would love to have them summer, but as you know, summer is that downtime. But there's a number of different things that are really uh, happening. Um, I'm gonna, I just want to share something, knowing that the time may be a, a kind of running out in some rates um, uh, for our time here. Um, there's a quote, and I don't know who said it. I, I keep on thinking it's Bishop Barron. Uh, Holiness emerges from our struggle to apply our faith. And um, we, we look and see that we're in the trenches, of getting our hands dirty. So that's what I hope to be doing. You know, not long ago, I went with the group to go to Washington, D.C., to advocate, as our bishops have said, for the farm bill, for a passage of the farm bill that would naturally help um, things like SNAP um, and for reasonable ways of our ecology, not only with farm insurance, but on how we better produce the food that we all eat. And it, it's in a broad bill, but things from advocacy to partnerships to getting out with programs and events. I'm happy to say that in November, through one of our parishes, St. Thomas More, Sister Anne there, uh, we'll be bringing in Dan Mislow, who is the founding executive director of Catholic Climate Covenant that was formed in 2006 before Laudato City uh, came and hit the press to do address the ecological needs of our communities. Uh, one of our uh, parishes down uh, by Donna, Maximilian Colby, actually has a chapter uh, from that Catholic Climate Covenant uh, in creation of what's called creation care teams. So hoping in parishes that we're talking about that, that that's a real reasonable way um, to kind of live out our faith with terms to our environment. So through the, and, and now as uh, the newly minted <laughs> director of Catholic Relief Services, there's, there's a number of dates associated with that, that with regard to the Rice Bowl um, and and working with parishes as well, meeting their needs. Case in point, I was there down in, in Andreas's parish, Our Lady of Peace in Williamstown, to talk to Father Sandy Davis and Rose Otto and the social ministry coordinator. I don't know, pay, folks, I mean, there's so much need out there. Um, that ministry, that food cupboard in Andreas Parish, it feeds up to 300 families a month, you know, helps supplement food. So at a, in this role, what I've been doing, and I've, only been able to, and it sounds like only, but like in a number of 30, 63 parishes, visit 11 parishes thus far and meet with things. In one way, it's a success. It's meeting the people. Um, but that was a real, real eye opener uh, there. And an influx of migrants coming from New York down to places like Williamstown and the role of Hispanic ministries and families. There's, all this is interconnected um, and how we all serve each other. So it's, it's neat to be on this podcast together. So um, in that regard, um, I'm looking to continue our partnership with my colleagues here and parishes as well as schools. Um, and one of the big, I, I want to say that four big identifiers that are, uh, that, are, that are big in terms of what I've been hearing is, of course, food insecurity. Of course, that's the number of things with the CRS Ripes, Wool Grants, the Amber Amory Hours has helped 
uh, me in coordinating and connecting with those in past years that received these grants, uh, as well as Kim and Drum and counting. Um, mental wellness, and, and especially in terms with regard to gun violence um, and violence, gun violence in of itself, as well as our climate change. So if I'm looking at ways and places to kind of focus energies and times with what I've been hearing, those four seem to kind of rise to the top. Of course, recent um, it, it, things that have been mentioned, the Star and Harrow, um, like uh, Our Lady of Peace, uh, is helping women who are pregnant uh, find the resources that they need. And it's been amazing. So there's a lot of great people, and it gives me a lot of hope and and um, know that there's a lot of holiness that's emerging from the struggle to live one's faith. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, I yeah. And I was going to ask about your 100 day plan that I've heard so much about, but I think you wrapped it up pretty solidly that you've got another 100 days to get all this done there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been, uh, and that was actually a charge that Donna gave in the beginning of this business. <laughs> it's a 90 day plan. Was <laughs> She's shaking her head. Um, but yeah. So there's definitely a lot. And, and uh, that, that work ethic she learned at um, Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't, she, I don't think she began with the howdy, but it was close to it. Yes. Um, Laro, that's how they trained us. Howdy. Welcome to Ray Roger. No, I actually think I may have had to say howdy, partner. Welcome to Ray Roger. So. It just gets better. Endless, endless. Mike Walsh. It will be relentless with Walsh. <laughs> and probably Kayla and probably everybody on this call. Um, with all of this, I think we should uh, make sure we check in with the person that's probably at every single one of these things that have been mentioned is, is, is probably taking this time to nap uh, from time to time just to re-energize herself. Anne-Marie, how has your summer been? Uh, and uh, can can we get you some caffeine? <laughs> it's, it's been good. Um, went on vacation earlier this June, well, in June. And ironically, um, I didn't leave the diocese, but Father Hughes was saying mass down there while I was on vacation. So I didn't quite leave work, uh, but it was all, it's all been good and everything. But there are some upcoming events that we haven't mentioned that we have going on across all of us collaborating together. So just some events to mention. Um, we're doing a retreat for our Eucharistic Revival Parish teams on September 24th, 21st down in Vineland. And we're having Monsignor Mel Greco. Uh, come in for that and then we are also bring um, we partnered with the Diocese of Trenton and we're bringing in their Eucharistic Miracles presentation and that will be at Our Lady of Hope from October 28th through November 5th. Uh, we're working on what times it'll be open for people to see but we're going to bring them down and they're in English and Spanish and there's uh, a QR codes you can scan so you can listen to it as you go through. It's a giant circle with like rooms so it's like wheels and then the last thing we have coming up is a holy hour on october 19th at holy cross parish at saint Teresa of avila church um at 7 p.m and it'll be a great bilingual reflection offered by father weber and so those are the events we still have coming up well, Anne-Marie, um, I am now sorry that you went last because you have proven in, I don't know, a minute and a half that you pronounce names better than Mike, Bress, and myself. So I'm Bress. sure Walsh will be reaching out to you by Monday morning to see if you want to be a co-host. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty impressive. I was like, oh my goodness, my co-hosting is in jeopardy. So... Um, <laughs> But thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, for being on the podcast today. Uh, I think the listeners got a lot of uh, good information of what's coming up, um, you know, what, all the resources that we have here. And I'll put some links in the in the write-up. So if anybody wants to get a, a hold of our guests or sign up for some of the events, um, they can do so. So uh, Mike Sims, Anne-Marie, Jose, Mike Bedix, Donna, Andres Ruby, and of course, Mr. Bress. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of the summer. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Donna, for allowing us to be in your staff meeting today. This was uh, very helpful. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, have a great week. <laughs>